everybody. Welcome back out to the garden. It is a beautiful, glorious day. I am at my strawberry beds. And as you can see, I did not do anything with them last year. <laughs> I mean, maybe at the beginning I kept the runners back, but the runners have spilled all over into my pathways. I got to clean all this up. So I'm going to share with you guys the process that I go through to clean up my strawberries. I know for a fact there is absolutely no science behind it. I'm likely doing it wrong, but it works for me every year to maintain healthy strawberries. So I, early this spring, I already came through and gave them a nice fertilization of some berry fertilizer. And then I get really rough with them. I'll take my gardening spade and I'll just rake through to get all the bed out. Kind of what it does too is it kind of breaks the runner strings between the mother plants. And I think the, what I tell myself anyway is that the individual plants don't have to work so hard to get what they need to produce good berries. So. Okay, doesn't that look better? And I can see like I have a couple little spots of grass here and there and a couple dandelions I saw as I was going through. And yeah, like here's a good dandelion. So it just helps me see what little bit of weeds I have better. And maybe it works in some of that um, fertilizer. I fed them earlier. And this bed will be huge and lush it come June. It will it doesn't hurt them at all. I think that they like it. And now what I'm gonna do is I did pull some, some accidentally come out, which is fine because it's overcrowded as it is. And I'm going to, uh, this year, um, set these in a pot um, with some soil and see if I can't give them away. If anyone wants strawberry plants and you're in the area, you know me, contact me, I'll have them. I wanna to talk to you guys about something that I suffer with every bad come my first planting time. And that is gardener second guessing and a little gardener anxiety. So right behind you is where I planted my peas. And it's been exactly 14 days ago and there isn't a single pea popped out of the ground yet. And my heart just starts going a little bit. Did I plant too early? Did, should I have soaked the seeds before I planted them. And I immediately start going through all this doubt. And no matter what, maybe not on everything, but I typically recover, even if I did make a mistake. Sorry, I'm just pulling out these runners out of the wood chips. Let me just show you. So I'm just gonna take this runner that was growing in the wood chips and I'm gonna plant it, replant it in some soil and give it away. Um, but what did I do? I did something a little different after I asked Google, how long does it take for pea seed to germinate before it's not good anymore? How long does it take spinach? How long does it take collards? And I went through everything on Google this morning. And then I was like, I can't, I can't own it completely. So I came out here and I just had a little prayer time with God. And I said, God, I'm just depending on you to help me out here. <laughs> Can you please help my garden grow well this year? And if I've done something wrong, can you help me <laughs> understand what I need to do to adjust? And then you just kind of got to let it go. 
and give nature its time to do its thing. And it is definitely like watching a baby grow. It doesn't seem like they're growing and then all of a sudden they're 18 years old. And <laughs> so I'm just gonna believe that they're doing their thing under there and it's all gonna work out just fine. So I just say that to say that if you deal with a little ever gardener's remorse, gardener's anxiety, you're not alone. I'd imagine most gardeners, even professional gardeners, sometimes have doubts. And I'm definitely not a professional by any means. I'm still learning what works. So give yourself some grace if you do make a mistake. Lots of people tell you what you should have done, what you could have done, but you're only ever going to learn from experience. So I'm going to keep working on pulling up all the baby plants out of uh, my pathways. Woo! Look at what I found. A little worm. And get this garden cleaned up a little bit. Definitely get the strawberry beds ready. I have a whole nother strawberry bed behind me. Um, and this is just one way that I maintain my strawberry beds. So I'm sure you guys have experience on how you maintain your strawberry beds. Leave it in the comments below if you think that there's something else I could do to um, increase my yields every year. Last year was by far the best strawberry year. I'm sure it had a lot to do with we just had torrential spring rains. So I'm probably gonna come in here and soak these beds at least once a week. And um, it was just a phenomenal year. I got 10, easily 10 gallons of strawberries from these two small beds. So that's pretty incredible. That's what I've got just from that front part of the bed. That's crazy. Maintain your strawberry plants every year and you won't have to do this. But at the same time, I've got a lot to give away now if anyone wants them. Or start a whole new bed you could with your runners. Hi. Hi baby. You can stop it. Okay guys, this bed is completely done, cleaned up all the way around. I've got a bucket like this and a bucket probably uh, overfilling anyway, about the same size of starts. So I still have this bed here to do. And I don't know, maybe 45 minutes per bed it takes me. Clean it all up, dig them all out. So anyway, just an encouraging word. I'm trying to encourage myself about where I am in my gardening season, that I'm not seeing signs of life yet. Hang in there, guys. Worst comes to worst, we just replant. Talk to you guys later.